Stop normalizing Nazis. Socially conscious game design. Extra credit. Hmm. I'm gonna need more coffee before I tackle this, aren't I? So, the internet was in quite the uproar about this yesterday. No idea why. I had to watch it recently. Um, okay, I take it back. Now I know why. <laughs> anyway, so we got this uh, YouTuber, um, Extra Credits. Never heard of him before. It's a big platform. It's understandable. I only watch a few, few people. Not regularly. Anyway, point is, they have one of the hottest, hottest takes there ever was on being a Nazi in a video game. Mmm. Coffee, it's a must. Anyway, so we've got this Twitter here. New extra credits. Historical and current political context matters in game design. No, it doesn't. Never has. Never will. Unless you're going for a historically accurate kind of title. Political context and historical and all that, none of it really matters. Anyway, don't treat Nazis and terrorists like they are just one of several morally equivalent character skins for players to try on. That's an argument I don't think anybody has actually said, used, or done anything about before. I mean, come on. Who really sits there and plays something like a World War II game, say Call of Duty, Battlefield, anything else that would have that setting? and think that the Nazis and or terrorists are exactly the same thing as the Allies or the British or, you know, whoever they're fighting. I mean, seriously, who actually thinks, you know, who makes that moral equivalent? But, uh, apparently, I'm not the only one who looked at this and was like, what? So, uh, yeah, things are apparently not going all that well <laughs> but uh down here i don't think people seem to understand that one we fully expect this to happen every time we upload a games or political video i have no idea i've never really seen their stuff so i don't know how often they play they upload videos claiming that games have to be political or whatever or not political and two we love losing all the bigoted subscribers are you kidding me less bigotry is great dislikes are still engagement and you know what? On one hand, he's right. Dislikes are still counted as engagement, according to YouTube. Four dislikes is equivalent to, like, one like or something like that. Which, uh, you know, is all good and well if that's all you're looking for. But to sit there and say that people unsubbing you, unsubbing from you because uh, of your incredibly hot, horrible take on something <laughs> are bigots. Come on now. You got to be better than that. Anyway, so I had to go in ahead and look because I'm curious. Apparently, there were some massive sub losses. And, uh, of course, there are. There's roughly, when I pulled this up earlier, it was not that high. Anyway, <laughs> it's a little over 8,000 that have unsubbed from uh, this channel. And uh, you can just sort of look at the graph here. Apparently, they've lost quite a bit, I guess, over since when is it when does this start oh th this this starts at the beginning of the year they've actually been kind of going down all year interesting and of course we've got the live subscriber thing which i think the most mass exodus was over the past couple of days uh, now it's just going little by little slowly ticking down i mean look at this there's somebody currently playing with it subbing and unsubbing uh, you can watch it in real time. That's always fun. But I wanted to get in here and take a look at this video and talk about some of the things on it. Because the arguments aren't that great. Oh, oh, we're going down. We're going down. <clears throat> 395. Anyway. So let's get into it, shall we? This is bad on so many levels. No one should ever have a random chance of fighting for the Nazis. And why? Seriously, that is something I need to know. Why? Why can't you have a random chance to fight for the Nazis, especially when you know what you're getting yourself into already? 
And we should never express that there's no meaningful difference between Nazis and Allied soldiers, or that they're functionally interchangeable. Nobody is making that. Nobody is making that equivalent at all. Nobody is going, oh, well, geez, I'm going to play as the terrorists this round. I guess they're no different than the Allies or the U.S. or whoever it is who's the other side who are technically the good guys. Nobody is making that at all. And before anyone equivocates and says not all German soldiers in World War II were... I don't really care. Not all soldiers. Sure, that's fine. Whatever. Anyway... Oh, this is great. <laughs> is not a Nazi? Then they're a Nazi. In that multiplayer shooter, when it switched you to the German side, did it go out of its way to tell you that the person you're playing was pressed into service under threat of their life? No, because you're playing a flippin' bad guy. Like, seriously. Why in the world would it do that? Unless it's relevant to the story that you're somehow like, I don't know, a double agent or something. You know, you're, you're on the German side, but you're really a good guy and it plays into the story. The game's not going to go through the paces of doing that. Can you, can you imagine this? You go in and you play a multiplayer game, right? Uh, you're sitting there, you're the allies or whatever, and you're waiting for three minutes because uh, it, and nobody has shown up on the other side because they're the Nazis. Because they've got a three or four minute video that is playing for them automatically that you can't skip telling them hey you're a nazi but really you're a good guy and now you're going to shoot up other good guys because this is a multiplayer game come on yeah that's a big old nope oh and on a similar note let's please stop forcing people to play as terrorists as well why like seriously why what is the point to all this there you are playing your modern shooter and all of a sudden you're a terrorist you didn't so didn't ask for this you didn't choose this and yet second first same as the first there it is wrong you totally chose that i'm sorry if you you're playing a game that uh let's see has multiplayer call of duty that's the big one to go to because that's what we're technically talking about right now because that's the game where you can play as you know the good guys or the bad guys and it randomly throws you into a group you know, 4v4. You don't get a say in which group you're going to be in. Uh, you can have a say in what who you're playing with if you queue up with friends and stuff. But uh, other than that, you chose to play as the terrorist and you chose to play as the U.S. or the allies or whoever else is the other team. Why did you choose that? Because you bought the flipping game. If you didn't want that, you wouldn't have bought the game and you definitely wouldn't be playing the multiplayer. It's that simple. Yes, you chose that. You chose that. Not somebody else, not the game designers, not somebody. Nobody else chose you for that for you. You took the time to buy that game. And if you're buying that game, not knowing anything about that game, that's technically on you at that point. So don't play the game. I mean, that's literally the name of your side in the. So what? doesn't matter what you call them. You can call them red or blue. It doesn't really matter. Game. We can do better than this. Even if you put aside all of the people who have had traumatic experiences with these groups, who have lost loved ones to abhorrent without actually opting into it in your game. They find abhorrent with to put on the costume of an ideology they find abhorrent without actually opting into it in your game. And by make... Yeah. Anyway... They probably shouldn't be playing that game at that point. But it also causes a lot of other issues, too. When you get to give people the choice and say, hey, and by the way, <clears throat> you know, you got to choose. Are you okay with playing the terrorists? Or do you want to play terrorists only? Or do you want to play the allies only? Or are you okay with everything? Kind of makes a problem with cues and other things. And, uh... If there's anything people really, really hate when it comes to multiplayer games, is waiting 10 minutes to get into a flipping match. That is something people hate. This is a quick and easy way of doing it by randomly putting people on a team regardless to fill up the team slot. Making people do so, we get them to stop thinking about it. To stop thinking of the meaning behind these things. No. No, we don't. We normalize them. We, we do not. You want to 
you know, that's going to be another argument that sends us down another path. Anyway, point is, I'm pretty sure people are smart enough and intelligent enough to know who the bad guys are versus who the good guys are. And when it comes to multiplayer in these games, they don't really care what side they're on as long as they're getting the chance to rack up those kill streaks, drop those bombs, and do a lot of damage and have a good KD or kill to death ratio. That's what they're interested in. <clears throat> they don't really care about who they are. I mean, seriously, just from personal experience of playing these games. For the most time, I didn't even know what side I was on unless they're, I'm playing a game where it's color-coded like a, a Halo or something. For, for the most part, I'm just looking for whoever is red that I need to gun down to rank up that kill streak. That's it. I don't really care if I'm on the allies or the terrorist side. In fact, I didn't even know which side I was for the most part until like maybe the end of the match when it's like terrorists win or, you know, the allies win or whatever they've been labeled as. Make them just window dressing for entertainment. <coughs> those uniforms, those symbols become things that no longer inherently revolt us. They... Yeah. When you normalize something, that is kind of true. I give you that reduce our visceral reaction to seeing the embodiment of these ideologies. Now, does this make us totally ignore the history that comes with them? No. But for some people... That's true. Really doesn't. It moves them from the territory of revolting to just edging. It makes... Oh no. Are you one of those people who can't handle Hitler memes? Is that what it is? Is that the problem? Oh my gosh. You're the person who looks at this and goes... <gasps> Because they've used a meme to troll you. I mean, seriously, Hitler memes. They're horribly, they're funny for a reason because they're so horrible. Hitler kills 17 million, one death. Freaking camper. I mean, come on, that's hilarious. Hilarious to me, probably not so much to you. But yeah, <laughs> you're that kind of person, aren't you? You're the one who can't handle the Hitler memes. I've got it now can't handle the Hitler memes. Okay, let's see. Let's continue. ...into hateful ideas there. It seems you might start that you should immediately leave, and if you don't not take iron crosses all over a website as a warning sign that you should immediately leave, and if you don't leave, you might start reading and buying into hateful ideas there. It seems like such... Yeah, see, with that... It's pretty much saying you play a Nazi long enough, you become a Nazi. Except for it's using the Iron Cross and hateful ideas on the internet. And that, that's not true. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's, wor that's just as bad as when, I don't know, when I was growing up, when things like Dungeons and Dragons meant you were a Satanist or something like that. You know, you worshipped Satan because you were playing Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gathering or reading Harry Potter. Do you know how acidine that sounds? <laughs> Just small and simple thing. But it's things like this that erode our safeguards against dangers we sacrifice so much to fight. By the time you've played a hundred hours of being a Nazi, their voice stabs become memes and in-jokes with your friend. So what? I mean, seriously, there are things out there that are memes from voice bites from things in video games. Um, let's see if I can bring something up real quick. Right here. We'll do that. This is something that came from a soundbite. A soundbite from one character, and that's what she says occasionally when you click on the thing. That tasted purple. I mean, come on. There's nothing wrong with that at all. By the thousandth time you respond as a terrorist, you're either celebrating them or making fun of them. No. No, you're not. By that logic, it's like... Now that I've played as the terrorist 3,000 times, I'm going to go join ISIS. See ya. Come on. Either of which helps the global crisis we have that takes thousands of lives every year. So what do we do? That's easy. Don't make them morally equivalent. They're not. You're, you're making the argument that they're somehow morally equivalent because you're 
forced to play them in a fictional game, in a fictional setting, which you chose to buy. You, you chose to buy this game. You knew they were going to be in it. It's as bad as people who were ups and set over things like Wolfenstein because they had Nazis in it or whatever, yet they weren't even trying to buy the game or wanting to play it. They just wanted it gone. Don't make there be no in-game moral difference between your Nazis and your allies. Bet and then, let's All talk about this. Fusion ...and hostage rescue multiplayer with no normalizing terrorists. In yeah. fact, by having all of the characters as counter-terrorists training for a possible threat, it highlights how real and present of a threat that is. And if you decide that you need to have both sides be playable, don't make them interchangeable. Don't have... Anyway, that's Rainbow Six. <laughs> that is the thing that they went with. See, things like, I don't know, Call of Duty and stuff generally come with a story. And um, one of the reasons people got so upset re with them recently is because they decided to go an alternative route to history that uh, wasn't their normal stick, you know. And uh, yeah, so it has a story mode, which means stories have to be told. So, there's also another thing that gamers really don't like, is when you give them options to do stuff, not being able to play as certain things that are already in the game. For instance, you're fighting Nazis, why can't you play as Nazis? The players randomly spawn in as one or the other. Allow players to choose which side they're on. Now, of course, this has also... Yeah, we talked about this briefly. ...sorts of in-game problems, such as creating shorter wait times for fascists, Yes, it does. Any game that allows you to choose and pick a side has this problem. You can look at, say, World of Warcraft for that. You know, you've got the Alliance versus the Horde. In order to alleviate that problem, they've got a now mer they have a mercenary mode set up to where if for whatever reason you're having issues queuing up or whatnot on your side, I think is how it works, you're capable of queuing up for the other side and you'll spawn in as like a human or something the equivalent to whatever your other side was. <clears throat> but you know what? Those wait times could be artificially extended. If it And that is how people stop playing your game. I said it earlier, if you've got to wait ten minutes in a queue because everybody is queuing up as allied, and you're an allied, <laughs> people typically don't want to do that. People want to go, well, better start going as the Nazis or something, or whatever the other thing is, the terrorists, just so they can get a shorter queue time. I would totally be on board of doing that myself, <clears throat> which luckily these games alleviate that problem by not giving you that damn choice. It meant players had an active choice in what teams they would represent if you're saying we need people playing Nazis in our games. And if you're going to say, but we need... Oh, and the rest of this is pretty much the same thing. To mean something. And it can't just be a skin. It can't be something that a game randomly drops you into. And really, if we are saying anything, a game has to mean something. And it can't just be a... Anyway, no, it doesn't really have to mean anything. All it needs to be is just a skin for you to wear and play your game. That really is all it is. You know, the whole point of this is... It's a dumb argument, <laughs> to be totally honest. Um, seriously, there's no real issue here at all, other than the fact that you don't want to play as the terrorist, and you chose to buy the game knowing that you have a possibility of playing as the terrorist. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I will talk to you later. See ya! Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, smash that like button, and always subscribe for more and of course there are other videos floating around somewhere on the screen so click one of those and see if you can find something that uh, suits your fancy till then i'll see you later bye